All right, I just finished up another one of my projects. This is gonna be a substrate bag mixer tumbler. So the idea is you take a dryer and you convert it to tumble your bags. Similar to like with the Aloha uh, Medicinals, how they have it to where it's like a tube, but this is just uh, a dryer where you push them in and out through the same end. Um, in my eyes, this is better for a one person operation. You can see I put it right next to my, my sealer. So as soon as they get sealed, they get thrown in there. They tumble around a couple times. That mixes a spawn into the bags, into the sawdust bags, and they go on the rack to, uh, to colonize. So um, for starters, I use a 120 volt unit, which is a gas unit, so a natural gas. With those, it's a little bit easier to work with. The motors and everything and the cord is already 120 volt opposed to the 240 volt bigger plug that you'd get with an electric dryer. The first thing I did was I removed the top, removed the control panel on the top, um, and then removed the face. And then from there, the tub is just sitting on some rollers. You can see there's a roller there and a roller there, and same thing on the back side. Um, you can see that roller right there. This whole tub just lifts out super easy, and you undo the belt that, that wraps all the way around the, uh, the tub. Um, one thing that I, well, and, then, and then from there, I gutted everything. So you can see there's no more any duct work that was in here. That just lightened it up, and there's no longer the whole torch assembly that goes right here for the, uh, the gas. Um, I also took the fan that was on here and I cut it off. So I turned on the motor, took a metal saw and just held it to it. So that way there's no fan, no air blowing around this thing. Um, and it's not kicking up any dust. Um, one thing I learned with this project was the wiring is a little bit different than your typical motor. You're not going to just have your, your hot and your neutral and your ground. This one actually needs a, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called like a, like a starter winding. And what happens is you have your, your neutral and your hot, all right? And those are switched, well, one of them is switched. In this one, it's the blue one that is switched. The black is actually neutral, it's actually white. This is your white coming in that switches to black in this model. And then your blue one is the one that's, that's switched. So um, I gutted everything up top, like it no longer has the door switch, it no longer has the control switch. This wire goes straight up to this switch, okay? And then I can also, I also wired in, you can see the, uh, the light, I wired in that as well to turn on with that switch. Then I know when when the unit's on. And then the thing that's really different about these motors is they need that starter winding. So what happens is when you press the start button, it excites that starter winding, and then it'll start the unit. And how it works is you can actually hear it clicking. That clicking is, is a, a solenoid that once it hits a certain RPM, that starter winding engages or disengages. So um, when you press that button, it engages the starter winding, gets it going, and then once it's up to RPM, it pulls that starter winding off um, so that way it doesn't stay engaged. So that was one thing that, that I was not aware of. I didn't know that it was even a thing. Um, it's, it's mainly, I guess, just in dryers. I've never seen that before. I'm an auto mechanic by trade, and these are definitely not in, in vehicles that I've seen is an AC motor. Um, but yeah, so, so the one thing that you're gonna have to save from the control box is your button. And all I did was I saved the button and I cut out the panel, um, the metal part, and I actually used some self-tapping screws. So there's, there's a piece of the panel behind this um, and there's some self-tapping screws. Let me see if you can see it. No, you really can't see it. But there's a, the piece of the panel's behind that and that's what this thing locks into the factory kind of square tab with a locking tab. Um, other than that, I did the the foam on the inside, so there's one inch memory foam. I think I went with a twin and that was just enough to bring it around and I put the seam underneath the, the one paddle. Um, and then I also wrapped a pad, wrapped some around the paddle as well. And then I used some Super 77 spray adhesive to, uh, to get it all down. And so far it seems like it's holding pretty well. We'll see, I might have to hit it up with more. I only used like a quarter of a can and then I ran out. So I might have to buy another can and reinforce it. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I got the bottom on it too. You can see I locked out. I think that this was actually for a dryer. I got it from Savers. It was beat up and I put a paint job on it and I put these little tiny little casters that came in today. I was like, oh my God, why? Did why did I buy these things? So look at how tiny they are. 
But I mean, they're rated for 100 pounds. I'm not really moving this thing around much. I think it'll be fine. But um, I think that this was actually used because there were two of them. I think they were actually used for a washer dryer because it's exactly 26 inches or whatever they are width wise. So maybe somebody had a basement that would flood and they, they had these down there or something. I don't know. It's just a weird size. You'd think it would be uh, a 24 inch table or something like that, but it's a 26. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, uh, that's the tumbler mixer and that should save a little bit of time in the lab with mixing up everything. And, uh, hopefully not have to have somebody help you. You just, you can seal, you just doing the spawning and sealing and then going right into the mixer and then rotate onto the rack. Uh, should, should really save time. Other than that, um, I'm playing around with the bottles again. This time I'm trying spawning them. Uh, I'll report back on that. This is the first time doing spawn on them and I did them a little bit wet. They kind of caked up at the bottom, which isn't an issue if you're doing bags, but it is if you're doing jars because it's a lot harder to, to bust up that hockey puck at the bottom. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you liked the video. Hopefully this inspires you to try to build something like this yourself. And keep on mushrooming. Take it easy.